Thank you everyone for joining us for this free series, Resilience in Challenging Times. And it is a great joy and an honor to have the author of the book, The Untethered Soul and the Surrender Experiment, Michael Singer, here with us participating in the series. Michael, thank you so much for joining us for this. Well, it's my honor, Tammy. I look forward to talking to you. I want to get right to it because I know our listeners want to hear from you. A lot of people are suffering right now. They would say they're suffering, whether it's economic challenges, health concerns, all kinds of fears related to the instability and unknown of the situation we're in. To begin, can you just talk directly to those people who are suffering in that way? What do you have to say? during this time? The way I have always approached things is we live in two worlds, the outside world and the inside world. We live in two environments. It's always that way, not just during these times, but it's not any different during these times. There is what is going on outside and there's what's going on inside. The outside, we don't have control over. We have some, but very little. And it unfolds. The inside, we have complete control over. It's our mind. It's our emotions. Our consciousness is the center of will, the center of strength, of power. And we have the right to, as you say, regain our kingdom. We have the right to live inside in a beautiful place. If the outside is not beautiful, it doesn't have to come in and disturb the inside. You're always better off centered, clear, filled with energy, filled with clarity, and then you can deal with the outside. You have to deal with the outside, but the outside doesn't have to come in. If you're letting yourself get sick, even if you're not sick, you're letting you get sick internally out of fear, anxiety, et cetera, et cetera, you're not doing anyone any good. It isn't good for your health. It isn't good for the rest of the world. You can't, the rest of the people around you, you can't make good decisions. People are making all kinds of very interesting decisions nowadays out of fear and anxiety. Fear and anxiety don't make good decisions. So the argument that how can you be doing okay inside when it's so bad outside is not a good argument. Because unless you're doing good inside, you can't interact optimally, Buddhists call it right action. You can't interact optimally with the outside unless you're clear inside. So I've always taken the position, it's the essence of the true spiritual teachings, that you have a responsibility to reach a state where you are calm, clear, open, filled with good energy, so that you can come forward and do the best that you can with the moment that's unfolding in front of you. If it is helping other people, good, you need to be clear. If, you're, if you come up to a car accident, but you're afraid of blood, all right, so you can't help anybody. You need to be okay with situations in order to serve them, in order to bring the best of your being into the moment. So this moment is no different. You start with realizing you don't have a right to let all the work, most of your viewers have done work on themselves. They've meditated, they've done mantra, they've whatever, they've done work, right? This is not a time, this is a time to bear the benefit of those works. It is not a time to say, this is different, I'm, I'm giving that up. This is, this is too real for me. I can't handle that. You have to be able to handle the moment in front of you. The alternative is you can't handle it. Well, if you can't handle it, you're of no use to yourself or anybody else. So I start with the position which I'm sure a lot of people have a lot of trouble with, that this is no different inside. You have a responsibility and an obligation for yourself, for your ability to serve others and to help the situation, to maintain a clear center inside. And basically, people know how to do that. But they're, usually, when times get really rough, people have trouble. People have trouble, and their mind takes over, and their fears take over. And the discussion is, of what use is that? The truths are still there. You're sitting on a planet, spinning around in the middle of absolutely nowheres. It has not changed. The sun is 93 million miles away. It didn't get closer. Your nearest star is 4.5 light years away. The whole universe is continuing to go about its business. You should have your mind and your heart in harmony with reality. And that is reality. And now come down and do your part to help serve yourself. Make sure you take care of your body serve your family, make sure they're making good decisions, kids, et cetera, et cetera, and do the best that you can with the economics. Obviously, the economics are, are atrocious right now, right? But you're, you inside, your state does not have to be affected by that. 
You will deal with the different situations as they unfold. That's the best that you can do. It's like, I like to present it that it's not even a discussion as to whether this is reality. It is reality. The question is not whether it's reality. Can you handle reality? And if we're supposed to be the highest species on the planet, if you can't adapt to reality, then you haven't done the work you need to do on yourself. So that's my starting position with this before we get into what should we be doing, because that's different for each person. But I'm willing to talk about that. What is the highest action? But if you're not clear and you're all scared and you have all kinds of anxiety and you're worried about what everybody else is doing, et cetera, et cetera, which you have no control over, then you have not done your primary job which is to hold yourself together, to have a sense of clarity, to remember that the universe doesn't belong to you or anybody else. It belongs to itself. It created itself, God, whatever you, however you want to look at it, science, God, all right? And this is part of reality. This is part of the universe. So that's the starting position, is that there's two reality, two environments, the outside and the inside. The outside should not be affecting the inside. The inside belongs to you. You should be feeling love, compassion, openness, clarity, strength, so that you can come forward during these difficult times and do the best that you can. Was it Roosevelt who said, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself, right? The only thing that you inside that you can mess up is that you're not willing to stand up, do your mantra, do your meditation, do your practices, and realize this does not touch those. You, you, you're, the self cannot get a virus. The self cannot die. Is it a time to understand the Gita, to understand the deep teachings that have been given to you? Now, from that point, come forward and do the best that you can to serve the moments that are unfolding in front of you. Now, Michael, I'm, I'm imagining a listener who conceptually is with you 100%. They want to have, I want to have control and clarity and love and peace on the inside, especially when I go to do my spiritual practices. And yet there can be, I think, during this accelerated time of disruption for many people, a kind of breaking through of panic. And it's like, what do I do then? You know, my normal meditation practice, I thought it would be there for me, but it's not working so well right now. Yes. So, we have a dear friend in common named Ram Das, bless him. He used to say something that I've held on to for my entire adult life, my entire spiritual life. Use it to go to God. You will go through many different situations as you go through your life. They're unique. This is very unique. Hopefully we'll never have to go through this again. Hopefully it will be over very shortly, all right? Did you use it for your spiritual growth? Did you use it? to let it hit, because it's going to hit the stuff that's left inside of you, what we call the personal. The personal is not comfortable with any of this. But the whole idea of spiritual growth, spiritual growth is to let go of the personal. So are you willing to do your best? You're not gonna be perfect. It's a difficult time, all right? If your meditations are not deep, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Don't get down on yourself or don't, don't cause more trouble because of that. The question is, are you willing to look and see why? Are you willing to see some deep, anxieties, deep fears, maybe deeper than you're used to looking at, and say, this is a time to not let them go. I can say you let them go and they're gone, right? But are you willing to work with them? Are you willing to do the best you can when they come up to relax, release, calm, and realize that is the major part of what you're going through, is to use it for your spiritual evolution. Tough times are when you grow the best like breaking through, right? That's the, the teachings. And so you have this opportunity to do it. You will not do it perfectly. You know, if, if you have fears, you're not going to go into deep meditation. But even the work that you do, just sitting there or any other work that you're doing on yourself, if you're willing to relax every time the anxiety comes up, every time the thoughts of disaster and fears, give them to God, let them go. Use this time to get closer to the depth of your being because you hopefully don't have to go through it again. And you'll find out that if you do that, that it carries you for the rest of your life and beyond that. You did the spiritual work that you're supposed to be doing. Earth is a place where souls are sent to evolve. That never changes, that is what's going on. Are you willing to at least do your best? It doesn't matter how good it is, just do your best to use this situation to let go of the lower self and to keep your connection with something higher. 
If that's your intent, just your intent is all I ask for, it's good enough. Even, no matter whether it looks better inside or not, if your intent is to do that in the midst of these times, you will get helped. Plenty of things will happen. You'll see that. But it's just that giving up and throwing your arms up and saying, I can't help myself. It's just so scary. No, don't do that. Work with yourself. Always do your best to work with yourself. So that, that's how you use times like this. You use them to go to God. You look back on them someday. They're going to be over. Right? Did you use it well? Mm -hmm. Now, Michael, in your online course with Sounds True, Living from a Place of Surrender, here's a quote. The mind can be a dangerous place or a great gift. And I think during this time, many people are finding their minds to be a dangerous place. They go into their minds and they project these worries, those worries. They read the news. It's a dangerous place in there. How can we relate to our minds instead to access the great gift that can come with the mind? Well, it's, that's a beautiful question. It's very deep. And you're separating the difference between the personal mind and the impersonal mind. The intellectual mind, what I call the samskaric mind, the mind that's coming from the blockages that are inside of you, that you, still, you, know, you haven't finished with yet, part of you haven't finished, it will create thoughts, it will create emotions. And the mind is capable, I, I gave you, I, I can only share what I do, all right? And that is, I have fixed my mind on the infinite. There is a whole universe going on. There's galaxies that don't know anything about this. It's not irrelevant, it's reality. Your mind should think about that, if, if that's comfortable to you. Right? There's other ways that you can use your mind that's more maybe in tune with how, how you think. But get your mind off of yourself. Your mind is capable of extracting from the personal. That's the mind that we should take time to do. Every, I used to teach, right? When you get in your car, which I do it nowadays, when you get in your car, stop for a moment. You're sitting on a planet, you're about to drive around the planet a little bit. When you get out, do the same thing. When you walk through a doorway, <clears throat> even if you're at home, when you walk through a doorway, stop. Remember, I'm on a planet, spinning in the middle of nowheres. Everything's fine. Everything's been fine for 13.8 billion years. It was left, the universe was left alone. It made DNA. It made everything you're looking at. It made your body, all right, without anyone being here to do it. This is the same universe that you are living in. This is just what it's doing now on this little planet. So you abstract from it. You think of the infinite. They always say, focus only on that which is infinite and eternal. Okay, and if you do this with your mind, <clears throat> you're going to find out that the lower mind falls away. You, it's just like mantra. It's just a thinking mantra, if you will. Uh, jnana yoga is what we teach about. So basically, that, that's, it's, just, it's going to be a struggle, but you're going to struggle anyways. <clears throat> Why not use it for a meaningful purpose? Like I said, when it's said and done, <clears throat> excuse me, I want you to be able to look back and say, I use this to go to God. I use this <clears throat> to become a better person, to make something greater of myself, because that's the entire purpose of your life. And there is no exception here. So that's, you have the right, you're in there. You're in there. Obviously, people come to me and say, but my mind's driving me crazy. I say, how do you know? How do you know your mind's driving you crazy? Because I'm in here. Well, who's in there? Who's watching the mind that's disturbed? Because that being is not disturbed. The self is not disturbed. The self is calm, clear in harmony with the divine. And so you take that seat and there's no excuse for leaving that seat, period. And that's, that's what I, I, I would like to share with everybody. Use this to grow spiritually. Now outside, obviously deal with what you need to deal with. Deal with your finances, deal with your family, deal with the illnesses if, if, if anywhere's around, uh, people you know, whatever it is. Do what you can to help, but inside, do this work on yourself. Do not use this as an excuse to throw your hands up and fall down into the lower self. Now, you said there's no excuse to leave that seat, the seat of consciousness. Yes. Tell me what it's like to be firmly planted in the seat of consciousness and not leave that seat. If we do our work over time, and I'm not talking about just a weekend meditation or something, but every moment, if you continuously work with yourself and let go of whatever's coming up, at some point, the Shakti starts flowing and you feel a strong upward flow of energy that feeds you. 
And it doesn't stop because there's a virus and it doesn't stop because of the politics and it doesn't stop because of financial problems, right? It will only stop if you leave it. It will never leave you. And so basically, you just commit yourself to God. You commit yourself to, to yoga, to the deep, to the depth. And so that's what it's like is you have a power inside that is pulling you back into it. It doesn't stop doing it during a time like this. It only stops if you are willing to say what's happening outside is more important than what's happening inside. And what's happening outside is never more important. I like to think we, nowadays, but well, not nowadays, even up to these times, we read and laud Anne Frank. You know what I'm talking about. I have to quote it, right? That this young girl sat there and kept a positive attitude in the midst of the Holocaust. So, okay, we're going through something. Not what she went through, all right, but we're going through something. You have an obligation to do your best to let go of what's pulling you down and allow what will pull you up to always be what's guiding your life. And eventually the Shakti gets so strong that it's almost like you couldn't leave it if you tried to. It's pulling you back into it. And the, Ram Dass used to say, back in the 70s, he used to listen to him, that you're st I'm standing on a bridge watching the water go by. Every once in a while, a spray comes up and touches me, but I'll never go back down there. That, that's what it means to establish yourself in the seat of self. I will never go back down there. I don't have to stop it from being there, but it's not who I am. I am the one who's noticing it. And I'm willing to do the work under all circumstances to maintain that seat of consciousness, that seat of separation, that seat of witness. Okay, I'm going to keep going with this, with the challenge of our times, Michael, and have you talk directly to that person who either has recently received a COVID-19 diagnosis or is quite certain that they probably have the virus even though they haven't been confirmed and they're listening to you and they're like okay that so that sounds good if i was well but i'm not these are the times that try men's souls the, the, the beauty of the discussion we're having is it's not like there's a choice if you have the virus you have the virus that's your outer state if that you have a problem you have a real problem but your inner state doesn't have to compound that problem. People can go through illnesses and use them to grow spiritually. Some people say, what I thought was the worst thing that ever happened to me ended up being the, the most amazing. People go through near-death experiences, you know that. And then they come back and they say, oh my God, now my life has way more meaning than it ever had before. Look at it from an inner state of clarity. Now you can deal with it. If you get yourself sick inside, one, that's not a nice seat for your soul to sit in, and I don't want you sitting there. I want you always to have a beautiful environment, even in the midst of this. You're going to go through it anyways. You understand that? There's no, there's no justification for saying, I better have two problems than one. You got a problem. The other thing is, as we all know, that your inner state affects your outer health. So to the extent that you're willing to give up inside and get all frustrated and blocked, you're not helping your immune system or your body fight off this thing because a lot of your shakti, your energy, your chi is being used to try and support your, your messed up inner state. So it's not like this is a philosophy. It's like you don't have a choice. It's terrible. I'm so sorry if, if you've gotten this virus or any other problems people have, financial and otherwise, or even concerns for their families, right? Of course, I have compassion, caring, but that's why I'm saying what I'm saying. I don't want you to be a mess inside just because it's a mess outside. That doesn't help anything. That's what I'm saying. That's what I would say to him. All right? Chin up. Okay. Now our listener is like, okay, I'm going to use this time to go to God. I want to do that. Uh, Michael Singer is talking directly to me. However, truth be told, I'm not exactly sure how to do that. I'm not exactly sure what that means. I obviously need to let go of a lot. Uh, a lot of things aren't, aren't going to be going my way. I, you know, I didn't want this or that. Okay, but beyond that, how do I use this time specifically, yeah. practically I to go to God? I understand. Moments are going to be unfolding in front of you. The first and most important thing is acceptance. Acceptance doesn't mean giving up. Acceptance doesn't mean you don't deal with it. Okay, I'm going to die or I got, I'm gonna, who knows. What no, it doesn't mean that at all. It means I understand that this is what's happening. 
and I accept that this is reality, not why me, not who did wrong. No, this is reality. That's in front of me. You can't do well inside if you don't accept reality outside because then your mind will just try to rationalize and cause all kinds of problems for you because it, it won't accept the outside. You'll be fighting with the outside instead of working with it. So you start with just that breath, okay, okay, this is the reality I'm dealing with. Then you try to keep a state of reasonable clarity inside about the reality. How do you do that? You can start with positive thinking. That's one level that at least you should be doing that, right? You sit there and say, we'll make it through this, and even if I don't, whatever it is, I will be a better person because of this. If you're in, into God running everything, if that's your, your state, God knows what he's doing. There are so many different things that you can do with positive thinking to create a nicer environment inside. In my opinion, you have an obligation to do that, both for yourself, for the health of your body, for your people around you. You just lift yourself up. The Gita says, one should raise the self with self, not trample down the self. This is a time to be doing that work. So you can't say, I can't do that. You, you can make your mind say things. You're going to used to say, every time there's a negative thought, replace it with a positive one. It's a good time to practice that. So it's, it's woeing for itself. Oh my God, this is terrible. I'll be fine. This is okay. God knows what he's doing. Or no, this is just reality. It's just reality. You can accept it either way. And then the next level is you sit there and if you do mantra, and mantra doesn't have to be an Eastern you know, Sanskrit mantra, but just get something going behind that you're hanging on to at a deeper part of your mind. I'll be okay, this is okay, I'll use this, whatever it is, right? Then what will happen is when the lower self starts, these situations happen, you just settle back into it. So you have a choice, which mind do you wanna to listen to? The lower mind, which we know what it's like, or you've built something beautiful inside. And then ultimately, the highest state is you relax every single time something hits your stuff, you relax, you relax. Relax and let go. Relaxing itself is letting go. People sometimes say, well, I relax, so how do I let go? The very fact that you chose to relax, relax your shoulders, relax your tummy, et cetera, and, and just relax inside, you, that is letting go. You're not getting all involved in what's going on. So that's the highest state, is you just keep letting go. And the worse it is, the better. You just keep letting go. You just to commit yourself. I'm going to use this. All right, then you, of course, put aside some time in the morning and evening to remind yourself that this is what I'm doing, All right? So that, it's sadhana, it's your spiritual practice. There, there's no exception. That's the main thing I'm saying. This, it's not like you put it aside. These are the reasons you do the work on yourself. And this is an excellent opportunity to do so. Okay, just two more questions for you, Michael. Here's the first one. That person who says, you know, I'm in an okay place right now. I'm all right, I'm sheltered at home, I'm well provisioned, but I feel so much pain for the suffering that other people are going through. When I listen to the news and I hear about people lying on the floors in hospitals, and it's just, it, it hurts so much. I don't even know how to take this in and process through it. Right. What, would you, what do you have to say to that pain? No. I know, I know that you have a particular affinity toward the Buddhist teachings. And the Buddha said that the highest emotional state is compassion. That when you're clear inside, that's the one that you feel. So it is natural to feel compassion. That's different than sympathy. That's different than, oh, I don't want to be there, right? So if you clear out your personal stuff, you will feel that. But there's nothing wrong with that. Mayor Baba said that when you, when you feel deep compassion, you're burning off what's closing your heart. You're allowing your heart to fully embrace the world, all right? In fact, um, Mother Teresa once said, we were working with some of her quotes, and she said, may my heart, get broke, bro get, may my heart break open so much that the whole world falls in. So you're saying, what happens if the whole world starts to fall in? My heart can't handle it. Let it handle it. Open it up. Let it feel completely deeply. It shouldn't make you weak. It actually makes you strong because that's the ultimate of acceptance. You're accepting the reality that's going on. It fits inside of you. People say, I want to go to God. They don't mean it because God is everything. So here you have part of everything coming into your life. 
Are you willing to feel it? Are you willing to open? Are you willing to let compassion take over your entire heart? Your heart should be completely open. The struggle is when you say, I can't handle this. I don't want to feel this. This is not right. You follow me? Then you're resisting the opening of your own heart. So again, may my heart break open so fully that the whole world falls in. That's Mother Teresa. That's a beautiful answer. Thank you. And then finally, Michael, I think a lot of people are trying to understand what's happening from an evolutionary standpoint. Is there a, a, a meaningful story behind this shift that's happening in terms of our recognition of our interdependence? You know, people are telling the story from the Earth's perspective, X, Y, Z. How do you see this time? No one's going to like my answer. <laughs> I, I literally do not allow my mind to do that. All right. To me, it is not my place to understand. It is my place to serve, to honor, to respect. Of course, we can all put it together different ways because it helps us feel better. If we think, oh, this is an evolutionary change that's going to help everybody, it's easier to go through. Right. But your mind doesn't know anything. At least mine doesn't. Excuse me. My mind doesn't know anything. I've learned that a long time ago. And so what it does is try to put patterns together so it feels more comfortable. I can, I can rest on that, all right? So I don't do that, all right? I just basically look at the reality, let it touch whatever it needs to touch inside, and it's not going to change things because I think it's one way or another. <laughs> like, if I, oh, now I understand. It doesn't matter if I do or I don't. It's not going to change a single thing, all right? If all it's going to change is how I behave. You understand that? If, if I think I understand, it can affect my behavior. I, I would rather let honesty, truth, reality, God be, be what's affecting my behavior as opposed to a thought pattern that I glued together. I hate to talk like this because people really like those thought patterns. To glue those together and say, now this is what's going on. So I, all about, I, well, I actually really liked your answer. So okay. uh, just to surprise you. And uh, just to end, Michael, I want to share something with you. I haven't told you, but you created a course with Sounds True, Living from a Place of Surrender. And uh, the thing I haven't told you is that often when I wake up in the middle of the night and I can't go back to sleep, I just say those words to myself, living from a place of surrender. Mm -hmm. And somehow it connects me to the uh, feeling tone of your teachings. And I noticed the worried part of my mind that had me wake up in the middle of the night. There's a, a quieting and a relaxation. And I think actually, uh, believe it or not, uh, a mantra for our time could even be those words, living from a place of surrender. They're very powerful words. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much. Uh, very Michael clear Singh. being. It's fun. It's fun to share with you. I love, I love interactions we have. Thank you. Thank you. May we all use this time well. Thank you. Namaste.